Hello, I am your host, Thelma Johnson, president of the Martha's Vineyard branch of the Association for the Study of African American Life and History. We are celebrating the theme this year, African Americans in Times of War. And we will be talking today with a veteran of the Army whose name is Alvin R. He has served in the Army, and we will ask him questions about his career as a military man. Good evening. Hello. And how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I would like for you to share with us where you served. Well, I was uh, drafted into the, into the Army. Uh, my basic training was done at Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri. Uh, after which I went to advanced infantry training at uh, Fort Ord, California. Uh, after eight weeks there and a holdover period and some complications of the Army uh, figuring out what to do with me, uh, I then moved to uh, Washington, D.C., where I served in the Old Guard, the Honor Guard uh, of the United States Army. And how was that for you? <laughs> well, which part do you want to know? Because <laughs> basic training uh, <clears throat> was pretty frustrating and difficult, uh, as everyone who's ever gone through that would say. Um, the uh, advanced infantry training was a little better because I had never been to California. And so uh, I had a little better opportunity to, uh, to see part of the world that I've never, I had never seen before. And, uh, and then I wound up as a holdover, which is uh, you're kind of in a suspense status waiting for orders. And I had a lot of free time, and uh, I got to see uh, you know, Carmel and Monterey and some of the, some of the beauties of uh, California uh, before I wound up with my permanent assignment in Washington. Tell me about the instructors for you in the Army. Well, uh, instructors are basically in your basic training and your early training. And uh, I, uh, I had uh, <clears throat> a, what I would call a love-hate relationship with these people. Uh, uh, what, what the military does, certainly the Army I know, but what the military does is uh, it takes young kids and pretty much breaks them down is my term. They, they, they really are tough on you and uh, make you, uh, you know, march in straight lines and <clears throat> do push-ups and those kind of things. Uh, and at the same time, they develop this esprit de corps where you really learn to respect the people who are training you and, and uh, you have competitions with other, other units and, uh, and you wind up with an esprit de corps that, uh, that makes you kind of really like these people and appreciate their, uh, their uh, service to the country. You mentioned that you served in the Old Guard. Tell us about that. The Old Guard is um, a unit, the oldest unit in the, in the Army. Um, it is uh, stationed in uh, Washington, D.C. and Arlington, Virginia. Uh, it is the battalion that does uh, ceremonial uh, uh, Washington, D.C. kinds of events. Uh, I was there during the Vietnam era uh, I participated in regularly in, uh, in funerals at Arlington uh, National Cemetery. Uh, we did uh, some state dinners and uh, one, of the, one of the, I guess, most noted thing that I remember, I was uh, part of the detailed uh, cordon in, in uh, Arlington Cemetery when Bobby Kennedy was buried. Um, and uh, we had uh, we had a, a regular diet of formal presentations of <coughs> parades, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> parades and, and, uh, and uh, other kinds of flag presentations at, at state dinners and things of the kind. Tell me about two of your most memorable experiences. The, the, the Bobby Kennedy funeral was memorable. Uh, because we were deployed, remember the train was slow, uh, uh, getting there was late, the funeral, the procession lasted all day, and we actually stood at parade rest, uh, which is, is a relaxed attention uh, stance, 
for about seven hours uh, on the on the line up to where his uh, burial was, and it was just kind of one of those things that happens in the military when you know when it gets tough, you just got to get tough with it. And uh, uh, occasionally they'd come by with a with a uh, glass of water for us, but uh, basically we stood there without any food or anything, uh, just uh, looking <laughs> looking sharp. Were you awarded any medals of any kind while you were in the service? I had the, the you know, the basic service awards, the rifleman awards, but nothing of any great distinction uh, other than uh, just having served as a soldier. Um, I don't even frankly recall what they were. I know I got the, the marksman award for, for shooting in basic training, but uh, uh, nothing, no, I was not in any kind of a war zone where most medals are earned. I see. What was the food like? <laughs> uh, it's interesting. Uh, you learn in the military that uh, you do want to eat in the mess hall on Sundays because <laughs> a lot of guys go home on Sundays and that's when they have steak and the nice stuff that, that <laughs> there's plenty of it to go around. <laughs> and <laughs> at other times, it's not all that great. While you were there, how did you stay in touch with your family? Uh, mostly by by uh, writing letters. Uh, we were not we were not uh, really financially able to to make you know when I was in the service, we were paid like eighty dollars a month or something like that. It wasn't a lot of money, so uh, there was a pay phone, but you really didn't want to put your quarters <laughs> in that phone. So uh, most of the contact with my parents and family was uh, by in, in uh, written mail. You know, we need to talk about the years that you were there. That'll make what you're saying more relevant. Yeah, I, I went in in 66 and uh, uh, was discharged in 1968. Okay. So I served two years as a, as a drafted. <laughs> as a drafted military. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you, you mentioned that you traveled while you were there other than California. That was that the, basically where you traveled? Yeah, that I, I simply, at the military's expense, I went to California and to Washington, D.C. You know, I, I took a couple of small trips myself uh, uh, when I had leave, but basically when I, when I had leave time, I went back home to my family. Okay. I've heard about pranks that military people play on one another. What are some of the pranks that you and others would pull on each other while you were in the military? Now you really want me to tell on myself, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> the most noted one that I can remember is uh, that I uh, had, we had bed check the time we had to be in. And uh, we had to be in by, I think it was 9.30. And I wanted to go to a movie that was on the post. And I went to this movie, and uh, it didn't get out until after that, right? <laughs> but some of my buddies had had uh, taken a duffel bag and put it in my in my bed and covered it up like I was in there asleep. <laughs> and and uh, when I returned, you know, at ten o'clock or whatever it was, a couple guys said, "Hey, man, I think you got caught," you know. So. <laughs> The next morning, I got called in, and, and the uh, the uh, first sergeant was was you know chastising me for missing bed check, and uh, and I uh, I uh, actually uh, told the little one and said uh, yes I did, and uh, I said I'm really proud of the fact that my buddies tried to cover for me, <laughs> and he said just get out of here, Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> okay, said so, uh, did you go to school? Uh, any uh, graduate training while you were there or any college? Did you take advantage of any of those benefits? No, I, 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 I did go to college after I came out on the GI Bill. I used the GI Bill for my college education. But while I was in the service, I did not, uh, I did not uh, attend any kind of uh, educational courses. Did you make any lasting friendships or relationships as a result of the military? Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I had a couple of two or three friends that, that we, we became close, uh, but frankly, they didn't last that much except for one fellow who, uh, who married while he was in the service. Uh, he and his wife uh, 
became very close friends of mine and in fact introduced me to my wife and that went quite well for several <laughs> several 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 years and in fact uh, after several years uh, we were reunited we separate had went our separate ways but after several years um, we reconnected with his wife after he had passed away uh, so that was probably the most lasting of any of the friendships I made. What did you go on to do after you left the military? Well, I returned to my home. Um, I uh, uh, was partly, I had not finished my college education, and uh, so I returned to college. Uh, I returned to my former employer and uh, <clears throat> progressed fairly well with that employer. And uh, I was, I, I married just as I left the military. And uh, I uh, had a handsome career with a beautiful wife and two lovely children. So, are you a member of any veterans organizations today? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. So what do you really think? How did the military really affect your life overall? Um, it, it was an experience for me that uh, gave me a, 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 a foundation, sort of. Uh, the military, you know, I said earlier that it, it has a way of breaking kids down and making men out of them. Uh, the discipline that you learn in the military is very, very powerful. In fact, you know, I think uh, our society now really needs a draft or needs to, t to take a lot of these young men and women into the military to give them discipline and structure, uh, which was uh, not that I didn't have that because I had a pretty solid family relationship uh, 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 coming up, but uh, it really does uh, teach you responsibility and, and dedication to a cause. Thank you so much, but I'd like to ask my last question. Is there anything you would like to add that we've not covered in this interview? Gee, that's an interesting question. I just, I, I think, can only say that the one lasting thing about serving in the military is that you feel a pride of having uh, given yourself to the, what may come. Uh, I was in the Vietnam era and frankly I will tell you I was scared to death that I was going to be sent to Vietnam. Uh, but I would have gone if I had been sent and I would have served. And the military just kind of leaves you with, with that attitude which is if you want me to do something tell me and I'm, I'm prepared to do it. Thank you so much for sharing your military life with us. No, thank you.